Alrighty, what up guys? This is Taylor. Today is Thursday, the 7th of September, NFL kickoff night. Can I get a hallelujah in the comments for NFL kickoff night? But alright y'all, I think it's been about a week or so since I uploaded a new video. It done been a minute. So good to be back, and we got the short week here this week. Coming off that three-day weekend. And uh, not too much action this week. So heading into tomorrow, so far this week we've closed three trades. We made 60% on the Pinterest calls. We lost 30% on the BTU calls. And then today we closed Walmart for a break-even. A big fat goose egg. So one winning trade, one losing trade, and a break-even. Now some math here for you good people. Personally, I'm comfortable risking about 5% of my account per trade. So if you have a $100,000 account, the max loss on any given trade would be about 5000 bucks. If you have a $10,000 account, max loss on any given trade would be about 500 bucks. So percentage-wise, had you taken each of these three trades this week, Pinterest, BTU, and Walmart, and had you risked about 5% of your account per trade, between the three trades, your account is up about 1.5% this week. So for sake of conversation, let's round up a little bit. And we'll call it 2%. You grew your account by about 2% this week. Now, the here and the now, 2% doesn't sound all that sexy. If you have a $10,000 account, you're probably not going to jump out of bed at the idea of making 200 bucks. Where that one and a half, two percent per week gets really sexy, I'm talking really sexy, is compounded over the course of one, two, three, four, five years. So if you could average about two percent per week, even if you started with about ten thousand bucks, five years later, that ten K compounds into a little over one point four mil. One point four million big ones. So the point being, not every week has to be a Grand Slam. And I love Grand Slams. I love aggressive trading. If you can put together a few good base hits and just do that consistently, two years goes by, three, four, five years goes by, you've got some really phenomenal growth. So with that being said, it's, uh, it's an interesting spot here in the market, guys. I'll show you a few things here on the scoreboard. The scoreboards are telling us to be a little bit cautious to the upside. The most important thing to recognize is that we're not back in May, June, July. Meaning we're not in a trend. Ever since, let's call it, mid-July, we've kind of been trapped in a box here. And as a swing trader, the trend is about a thousand times easier to trade than the chop. So QQQ, scoreboard says the Bulls have two points and the Bears have two. So we have a tied score. An old-fashioned Western standoff. Nobody really has the edge. And then on the S&Ps here, scoreboard says the Bulls have one point and the Bears have three. So on the S&Ps, the edge actually favors the Bears. Price is under the 50 under the 21. Momentum's under the zero line. So the Bears have got the edge on the S&Ps. If we check the small caps at IWM, the Bulls have zero points, nothing to stand on, and the Bears have four points. So that leans bearish. The S&Ps lean a bit bearish, and then the Dow Jones. Bulls have zero points, and then the Bears have three. And then if you go through a few of the sectors, um, the financials. Financials are not looking the greatest. Zero points for the Bulls and three for the Bears. You have healthcare. Healthcare not looking all that great. Zero points for the Bulls. Three for the Bears. You have the industrials. Industrials kind of look like dog shit. Zero points and three for the Bears. Um, the utilities. Yeah, it's the utilities that look like dog shit. The industrials don't look great, but then you got the utilities here. Zero points of the Bulls and five points of the Bears. The indicator actually says XLU is a perfect short right now. 
And then if we jump over to the RSP, and the RSP, guys, is your equal weighted index. So it takes all of the 500 stocks from the S&Ps and gives each of them an equal weighting. So you don't have the influence of, uh, of a few heavily weighted tech stocks. So for RSP, we are under the 21, under the 50. We have a daily sell signal. And momentum has been below the zero line since early August. Therefore, the bulls get zero points and the bears get four. So for the RSP, the industrials, utilities, the financials, healthcare, the small caps, the DAOs, the S&Ps, the bears have got the edge. I'll even show you the semiconductors. The almighty semiconductors kind of dropped the ball here today. Back under the 50, back under the 21, bulls have one point and the bears have three. So again, what this all tells me for now, clear as day, is that we're not in a trend. We're not working with the same market we were working with in May, June, July. So what that means is if you run the scans and you find something with, you know, the perfect squeeze, a bunch of buy signals, good structure, you find something that fits the bill. Until things change, you don't really have the wind at your back for that kind of swing trade. So on the scans tonight, we have Pinterest, MRO, LYB, Walmart, and BRK slash B. And these are all great looking setups. Pinterest, which we traded coming into the week, this is pulled right back into the buy zone. For now, it's an A plus setup. So says the indicator. We have LYB. LYB's got a nice daily squeeze, has a nice weekly squeeze. There is MRO. MRO has a daily squeeze and a two-day squeeze. Um, what else we got? We got Berkshire. Old Uncle Warren. That's got a brand new bull squeeze. And then Walmart. Now, we were long Walmart coming into today. And for what it's worth, I think Walmart is one of the better looking setups in the market. The problem is it's kind of uh, a lone wolf. It has no market behind it, and it has no sector behind it. If you go and check out XLP. On its own, though, it's perfect. We have buy signals across every time frame. Buy signals up to wazoo, and squeezes on the daily chart, the two-day chart, and the three-day chart. In a better market, I'm buying more Walmart this morning. I'm not taking that trade off. I'm buying more. The reason I took it off this morning for break even, part of that is the issues in the market. Got the S&Ps and the Qs under their daily 21. We have scoreboards favoring the bears. We got lower time frame sell signals. I'm not loving the market. And I'm not loving XLP. So that's part of the reason for taking that trade off this morning for break even. The other reason is, all right, if I hold on to Walmart, it might work. And granted, had we held on, I think we'd be up about 30%. But more importantly, I'm seeing issues in the indices. I'm seeing issues in the sector. Taking off Walmart for break-even guarantees that between the two other trades, I'm going to finish this week with a net profit. I made 60% on Pinterest. I lost 30% on BTU. Taking off Walmart for break-even guarantees between those three trades I've grown my account this week by about one and a half percent in a better market I'm buying more Walmart trying to make a little bit more this week in the current market and until things change as long as the scoreboards favor the bears I've got to be a bit more cautious so that's where I'm at for now guys um, the good news is if the bulls can actually turn things around we have uh, a lot of squeezes to work with. Walmart, Pinterest, LYB, MRO, Berkshire. And then you've got the big boys. Amazon has squeezes on the daily chart, the two-day chart, and the three-day chart. If the QQQ can clean things up, we'd probably see that squeeze fire to the upside. To be determined if the QQQ can clean things up. 
you have a daily squeeze here in Microsoft. And then squeezes on the three day chart and the weekly chart. So keep it simple, guys. If four, five, six, eight weeks from now, the QQQ has turned the corner and taken out the highs, there's a really good chance squeezes in names like Amazon, names like Microsoft, NVIDIA, Google, they've probably fired to the upside. So a couple squeezes here in Microsoft, and then you have Meta. Meta has squeezes printing on the 5-minute, 1-hour, 2-hour, daily, 2-day, and the 3-day time frame. Again, if we have a strong market, they probably fire to the upside. If the S&Ps and the Qs take out today's low, they're probably not going to fire to the upside, at least not yet. So again, that's the good news. If we can get the S&Ps and the Qs cleaning things up, get price back above the daily 21, back above that daily 50, get some fresh lower time frame buy signals coming through, then I like all those setups. Walmart, Pinterest, Microsoft, Amazon, etc. If they can't clean things up, and again, if we take out today's low, then I think as far as swing trading, we're going to shift our focus back to the short side. And then we're looking for trades like McDonald's. For, uh, for those of y'all in the mastery, McDonald's is pretty much the poster child of the trade we're looking for in the right market. Scoreboard favors the bears. We've got sell signals, busted structure. If everything points towards path of least resistance for the market is going to be to the downside, we look for something like McDonald's. We got the squeeze signal, we got a good entry near that 21 EMA, and we caught the flush into our target. If we flip McDonald's upside down and we check out the inverse chart, so minus MCD, it would have been the perfect bullish trade. We got the green arrows, we got the squeeze, you get long near that 21, you look for that squeeze to fire to the upside. So that's the trade in more of a bullish market. And the trade in a bit more of a bearish market is just the opposite. We are looking for a squeeze with sell signals and an entry right up under that 21 EMA. So for now, guys, it's, uh, it's a game of patience. See how tomorrow goes, we'll see how next week goes, and then we'll take it from there. But again, major thing to, uh, to keep in mind here. Not every week has to be uh, a home run. More importantly, don't get too caught up on your win rate. I I'm learning more and more the win rate is not the most important variable. The most important variable is the size of your average win in comparison to the size of your average loss. You could find an option strategy that generates an 80% win rate. If the losing trades are two, three, four times bigger than the losing trades, it's not going to work. You could have a 50% win rate. You could be wrong just as much as you're right. But if your winning trades are two times bigger than your losing trades, you can move the ball forward. Um, and here's a good example. So back in May, um, let me see, let me see. So back in May, so May through June and a little bit into July. Where are we here? Boom, there we go. Yeah, so back in, um, you know, May through June and a little bit of July, I turned that $2,500 account into 25000 bucks. So I took all those trades from TD Ameritrade, imported them into a watch list, and I'm kind of putting together the, uh, the stats here. I've got a few more trades to go through. So far, though, check out these stats. You would think that if somebody 10 x an account in two months, 2,500 to 25K, you'd probably assume that they're never wrong. They've got a crazy good win rate. They're, uh, you know, they're correct eight, nine times out of 10. Not the case of that small account. So check this out. The win rate, a little bit better than 50%. The win rate comes in at about 56%. 
So it's not a win rate that's going to knock off your socks. More importantly, the average win was about $860. The average loss was about $350. My winning trades, on average, are about two and a half times bigger than the losing trades. If you can work that ratio, then you don't need a 90-80% win rate. Something for y'all to ponder. But alright guys, as always, I appreciate you watching. Appreciate you being a part of the community. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the like and the subscribe button. And I'll get a video posted sometime this weekend. And we'll uh, you know, recap this week's action. Crank up the scans and see what's looking good for next week. But alrighty, y'all have a good night. We got NFL kickoff in about an hour and a half. So I'm going to go get ready for that. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Adios.